Did you say 138? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let you leave this one. church on Wednesday night service, you sing the first and the last. And see, we would have been good on the first and the last. And when we had that second verse, we had no idea. Amen. It didn't work too good. Hey, listen, if you can't come up here and have a good time, I know y'all are having a good time at home. Amen. So, uh, Here's all past, home and last ever 
to rejoice With me for me billows rise from the mighty deep Then my Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep And he leads me gently all through this world below He's a real friend to me, oh I love him so Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Let us sing forever all the same grace. All the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Let us sing forever all the same grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Tommy, do you have a song for us tonight? All right, Robert, come on. I'm just kidding. <laughs>
you'll hide me behind the cross. God, little will be made of me and much of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11.
somebody has already hit the nail on the head yeah. out there already. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Say oh me if you left your Bible at home. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Mm -hmm. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was uh, righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and uh, by, being, by he being dead, yet speaking. Enoch, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Therefore, his translation, he had uh, this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward, a rewarder of them that diligently Seek him. Noah, by faith, and Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Abraham and Sarah, beginning in verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, uh, after receive for an inheritance, obey. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Mm -hmm. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, their heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength and conceiveth seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as of good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, and as the sand which is by the sea, sure, innumerable. These all died in faith, having received the promise, but having seen them from afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers in a pilgrim land. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tired, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Of him it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, according that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Amen. We'll stop reading there after verse 19. I want to talk today about the heroes of faith. Amen. Heroes of faith. And if you read this book, this is a chapter of faith, as it's been said before. There's a lot of heroes of faith in this Bible. Yes, sir. 
But there's some folks in this Bible got some more faith than, than most of us have. Amen? Oh, yeah. uh, they got a lot more faith than most of us have. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, uh, I, I want you to think just for a little bit about uh, uh, Cain and Abel. And, uh, one of them got in trouble because uh, when it come time to bring a sacrifice, uh, they, brought, uh, they brought the fruit of the land. They just brought the fruit that was laying out on the ground that they, they picked up, and it was the fruit of the land, and, and it really didn't mean that much to them. It really wasn't that great of a sacrifice, but they brought it anyway and give it to the Lord. How many times are we guilty of the same thing? What we give really isn't a great sacrifice to us. We're, we're just giving out of abundance. We're not really, we're giving out of abundance. We didn't really dig. Uh, for that offer. We didn't really dig deep. You see, there's tithes and there's offerings. Amen. I don't know if y'all know the difference in that, but there's tithes and then there's offerings. See, that tithes, that's the tenth. That's already his. Everything you have is already his. He just asks you to give him a tenth of it back in tithes. But then that offering is above and beyond. That offering could be of your talents, could be of your time, could be of your uh, treasures. Amen. And God, God wants an offering from us. And so he, he didn't really dig too deep to get that offering. He just picked up some little old fruits up off the ground. But then the other, he gave the fatted meat. And he brought, and that was like a living sacrifice. That, was, that fatted meat, that was something. You see, he had to work to get to it. He had to, had to do extra work to get to it. He had to do extra work to bring it to God. God honored that. Think about that today. Heroes of faith. And think about Noah today. Now here's a fella just out there and God says, it's fishing to flood and I'm fishing to end this thing. I will give you a chance because you've been faithful, you've been upright, and I can count on you. <coughs> he said, I need you to build an ark. And then go give you an opportunity to get your family out of here. It's just in the flood. And Noah started building that ark. What a man of faith. Listen, if the Lord told me today to build an ark, I wouldn't know where to start. Y'all ever seen me build anything? You wouldn't ride on my ark if I built it. Huh? You'd be scared to ride on my ark. Noah, you know one thing? Noah had never built an ark before. Think about that. They didn't have no Home Depot. You couldn't just order the supplies and go to Home Depot and pick it up at the contractor counter. It was non-existent. You couldn't just Google it. How to build an ark. You couldn't watch it. When I go to fix something, Brother Emmer, you know, I changed the brakes on my van one time. You know how I did it? Couldn't get nobody to help me with it. I pulled up a milk crate, set it outside, took my computer outside, had the Wi-Fi on, turned YouTube on, and I watched a video on how to change brakes, and I changed my own brakes. You can watch a YouTube video on almost anything. If anybody wants to make me a pineapple upside down cake, okay? there's videos on there how to do it. You did, and it was good. It was good. I was bragging on you today uh, about that pineapple upside down. But he, he couldn't watch no YouTube video to find out how to build an ark. He was inspired by God to build an ark. He was inspired by God to build an ark. And everybody come against him. Could you imagine the men of the town walking around going, what is this nut? doing. He said, man, this is the rain. God told me to build this ark. And you know the townspeople uh, gathered up like there was a collision on Highway 9 and everybody wanted to see what was going on. <coughs> you don't ever see a collision out here on the road and everybody drives out of the way to get in the way to see what's going on. That's how people were coming by Noah's house. They were just, what in the world is going on over here? This old man has lost his mind. This bird is crazy. But Noah, a man of faith, went out on faith and did what God told him to do. And you know when he stepped out and did what God told him to do, he didn't have no problem building that ark. 
They say uh, in carpentry, check your measurements twice so you cut only once. You know, I don't think Noah probably had a problem with that. I think Noah probably laid that wood out there and said, Because the ark's pretty big. Yeah, for real. Say, so I think that's where I need to cut it. Didn't even have a sawzall. <laughs> How in the world would you do it when I can't do nothing at the house without a sawzall? <laughs> Brother Emmer, what you doing? <laughs> I'm down at nursing home visiting Sarah. Okay, well, when you finish, you mind bringing me your sawzall because I got a little something I want to work on. That's how it works in today's age. He didn't have a sawzall. Man of faith started out without a sawzall and a YouTube video to build an arm. You know what happened? Because of his efforts, his family, they say he built an arm. And everybody said, man, it ain't rained in so long. What are you talking about, rain? What is this? What is this? What is this? He said, no, I'm telling you, God's just opened up heaven. It's going to pour out rain. It's going to flood. The water's going to come up, and everybody's going to perish. Oh, man, you crazy. We ain't never seen nothing like that before. You are crazy. How many of your friends think you're crazy for sitting up here on Thursday night in the house of Lord? Huh? Lots of them. Lots of them. Amen? But he did what God told him to do, and God honored that. And two by two, he loaded those animals up on the ark. Hey, some of those animals I wouldn't have put on the ark. Huh? You, do you think I'd have put a lion on, on my boat? Would I put a couple of bears on my boat? Huh? If you've seen anything I've built, there's no way you would load an elephant on it, let alone two. But he was a man of faith. What was the joke about this? said, you guys are snakes? They said, no, we're adders. Isn't that what it was? But he told us to multiply. Told us to multiply. Yeah. He said, we can't. We're adders. <laughs> <laughs> you get that on the way home. But listen, he did what God told him to do, yeah. and he went out on faith. When you go out on faith and you do what God tells you to do. God will bless. Yes. We got some heroes of faith in the Bible. Yeah. But then I want to tell you, we got some heroes of faith here on earth. And we got some heroes of faith in this church. Yes. I'm sure when God told them to build this church, and Sister Joyce said it several times, that they, man, they, they wasn't ready for all this. But God said do it. And they went out on faith. And when they went out on faith, guess what happened? God honored that. And you are in this place today because God honored their faith. Amen? And he's still honoring their faith. They're going to see an awards banquet tonight for Bailey. God's still honoring their faith tonight even when they're over there. Well, when they go up to the mountains and they're up in Tennessee on vacation, God's still honoring their faith yes. while they're gone. That's right. Because we're still having church and we're still having a pretty good time. We're still praising the Lord. Yes. We're still sending out the message. God honors your faith. Here's what I want to ask you today. Are you a hero of faith? Are you a hero of faith? It's going to take some things to be a hero of faith. One, know God's voice. You see, when God heard, when Noah heard the voice of God telling him to build an ark, he knew it was the voice of God. And we need to know the voice of God today. Yes, we do. And then he had to act out on the word of God. He had to act out on what God told him to do. Many times the Lord tells us to do something in the church and we don't act down on it. And somebody misses a blessing in this place because we do not do what God tells us to do. And somebody misses a blessing. How would you like to be the one that caused somebody to miss 
their blessing. How would you have liked to have been in Noah's shoes in those days and miss the call of God? And then we think back over our life, how many times have we kind of missed the call of God? Whether it be just to pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them how much you really cared about them. Tell them how much they really mean to you. That might be their breaking point. And for you to call them and tell them, Sister, I love you. I'm praying for you. And that God loves you. And encourage them. That might have been God's call for you to do that. And you missed that. And so they have to obey God's call. So you have to know God's voice. You have to obey his call. And you have to believe. You have to believe. You have to believe. The problem is, is a lot of folks don't believe. They don't believe in God. And more importantly, they, they, if they do believe in God, they don't believe in the abilities that God gives them. They don't believe in what God gives them to do. But they had to believe. And that, my friend, is how Noah built the ark. And his family was saved. And those animals went on two by two. And those that are in unbelief today, how many people perish that day out of unbelief, Brother Emmer? How many people perished of unbelief? Not Noah's unbelief, but their own unbelief. Yes. <laughs> their own unbelief because they did not prepare. The Lord has provided us a lamb. He's provided a way. We preach about it all the time. We preach about the blood. We preach about Jesus died on the cross for the remission of our sins. We preach all the time about salvation. And how many people don't hear that plea? They don't hear that word. They don't accept that word. And let me tell you, the reason that some of your grandchildren are saved today is because you heard that word. You believed that word. You acted on that word. And some of your grandchildren are saved this day. And I want to tell you some more. Your grandchildren are probably going to get saved because of the word that you heard. Because of the faith that you had. Because of the faith that you kept carrying that, that word. And you kept carrying it. Uh, just another gospel mile. Just long enough for somebody else to pick up on it. You heard the word of God. You believed it. And some of your folks are going to be saved because of it. Some of your children are saved today because you heard God's voice. And you got into a place where you needed to be so that God could use you. Amen. We're talking about heroes of faith today. There's some heroes of faith in this fellowship of people. And we may go through a couple of sermons on heroes of faith and talk about some of those heroes of faith and some of the things that God was able to do with them. But here's what I want you to get tonight. What can God do with you? What can God do with you? It's awesome what he did with Noah. It's awesome what he did with those folks. But he's got a work for you to do. He's got somebody for you to reach. What can God do through you? To do it, we have to know him. We have to be able to hear him. We have to obey him. And we have to act upon his call. Let me ask you today. Are you acting on his call? Or are you just sitting? Are you just sitting? There's a famous quote that says a desk is a dangerous place to view the world. Think about that. A desk is a dangerous place to view the world. You can't run this country as president sitting in the Oval Office behind that desk because you have no idea what's going on out there. You, you can't pastor a church sitting behind a desk because you have no idea what's going on out there with the people and what's going on. You can't be a good Christian just sitting in this pew and doing nothing. 
Oh man, that that hits home right there. You can't be a good Christian just sitting in this church and yes, doing nothing. Huh? Sitting in a pew and not doing nothing, it's a dangerous place. It's a dangerous place. Because you're going to get stagnant. You're going to get stale. Huh? Then you ain't going to be good for anything. We got to get our feet out. We got to get our feet out on the pavement. We've got to get our feet out. We, we've got to get ourselves out. We got to talk to people, encourage people, show people the love of God so they see the love of God in us. We got to act on what God is telling us to do. Who wants to be a hero of faith? Who wants to be the hero of faith in their family? I preached a funeral not long ago over there in uh, McClinney. And uh, family there, they were kind of going through something. Uh, four or five sisters or three sisters or something like that. And it was kind of all going through something. And here's what I told them at the mom. They ain't talked to me since then. But it's the truth what the Lord told me to tell them. And if they don't ever talk to me again, that'll be fine. But I said, your mother was, she was the, she was that rock in this family. She was that glue that held this family together. She was that rock. And Mama would go by, and it seemed like she was putting her nose in everybody's business, because I've heard y'all talk, and Mama would put her nose in everybody's business. But somehow or another, Mama used that glue that she had to keep everybody centered and everybody together. But Mama is gone. Somebody is going to have to step up out of this group of people and be that glue. Somebody is going to have to step up out of this group of people. Now, you may choose today that it might be you. And then someone else may say, it's going to be me. And then the other sibling might say, it's going to be me. Guess what? Nothing wrong with that. Then you'll have three rocks in this family, and three rocks will hold this family together better than one rock. Amen. All of us working together for God will do more for this church than one or two. Who wants to be? Who wants to be that one today? If we all step up and bind together, if we all go to work, we can do it. If we all go to work, we can do it. And God will bless each and every one of us. And there will be no one more important than the other in God's eyes. Amen. Here's where we're going to falter. If we get some glory seekers and we get some folks that's just doing it for the glory of their self and not the glory of God. Listen, I, I don't need glory for myself. I am who I am. As Popeye the sailor man said, I am and what I am and that's all that I am. I'm Popeye the sailor man. That's what he said. Listen, I just want to be who the Lord wants me to be. And I want to help everybody that I can help. I want to give all I can give. And I want to do all I can do. Are you with me today? Who's on that train? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray, Lord, tonight that we would all just dig a little bit deeper. And God, that we would put ourselves in that place where we want to be the one that helped. We want to be the one that went. We want to be the one that did. God, we'd be sensitive to your call. God, that we'd be able to just work in the kingdom of God and do more than we've ever done before because the church needs it today. That we just do more than we ever have done before. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer tonight, come. In this chapter of faith, we still got Jacob and Joseph. We still got Moses. Still got Joshua. Still got Rahab. 
There's a lot of people still in this chapter of faith that we haven't even touched. I don't think you could touch it all in one sermon. There's some great people that God used. Some great people of faith. Amen.
Somebody talked to me a little bit before church and I said, I need you praying. And uh, so we gonna send them a prayer on a prayer cloth. And I'm gonna tell them to put it up close to them. Tell them to put it up close to them every day. Sleep with it. God will hear their prayer. God will honor that, I believe. Yes, Amen. That's why I called Brother George up because he's a great man of faith. I believe that. Amen. Amen. I have all confidence that God will hear that prayer. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a prayer request today? That... I do. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to still remember George and George and myself and, and our family. But, uh, just um, do y'all know a Doc uh, Nichols? Doc and Rita Nichols? Well, Doc's son, he's 52 years old. I saw him yesterday at the Waffle House, George and I did. And I asked him how he was doing and all. He said, well, you know, he says, I'm doing okay. But he says, my son, that's 52 years old, they found out that he has cancer. And it's in his lung. It's in, inoperable. And it's already spread to his brain. It's in his lymph nodes. And, and him, 52 years old. And he, you could tell he was heartbroken. I mean, that's the age of my daughter, 52, and George's. So we know how that is. But anyhow, so I told him about George's miracle. Yes. And I said, and you believe in healing, and you believe in the power of prayer. And I said, you know, the Lord can give him a miracle. Yes. 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 He can when that, she was singing that song, and, you know, and all. Yes. And I believe that. Yes. Yes. I believe it too. Yes, oh, ma'am. yes. Who took it or the fact that it shows up and it wasn't taken at all because he doesn't want to judge the wrong person. He doesn't want to judge anybody. Amen. Our friend Randy that she was asked prayer for and the doctor said that uh, the cancer is, is going too far and that there's, uh, medically there's no hope. But we know yes. we know Dr. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Connie, we know something about Dr. Jesus, don't we? <laughs> yes. Amen. She's a living proof of what God can do. So that's awesome right so there. So we're sure. So, <laughs> yes. 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 And, uh, amen. So we're, we're continuing to pray for Randy. Anybody else? Yes. Bambi needs prayer. Bambi's sick. The kids, how they doing? Sick. Everybody over that way is a little bit sick. And so we'll pray for them. Just remember uh, my stepbrother, um, Terry, the one that my mama was married to that died. His son Ron. has got something going on with him. He don't know what it is, but he, he developed some blood clots. He went and had a tattoo. I heard later that he had a tattoo put on his leg, and he got hepatitis C. Can you speak up a little? We can't hear you. My, my stepbrother, Harry, that mama was married to before uh -huh. he died, yes. He's about my age. I think he's maybe a year younger or older. I don't know exactly, but um, he's a truck driver, and he's always driven trucks as long as I've known him. Him and his daddy both drove, and he was out on the truck, and apparently while he was out, he got real sick, and he come home and went in, went to bed, and he wouldn't get up, and finally they got him to the doctor, and he had blood clots all through his legs, and it, he don't know for sure, but they believe it started from a tattoo that he had put on his leg and it got hepatitis C in it. And now he can't use any of his limbs. And uh, we, um, I, his son called me the other night and asked me to have prayer for him and, and talk to my mama, see if mama would call him and pray for him. He said, have grandma call him 
and prayed for him. Said, I, uh, I know that he'll be all right. I think Grandma will call him. And so okay. Mama called, and when she did, he told her, he said it would just hurt him to even have his hand up like this to the, with the yeah, he didn't have enough strength, so he mm -hmm. had, ended up laying it on the pillow and just talking to her. So his name is Ronald Harry. He's uh, my stepdad's. He's passed now. My stepdaddy has, but that's his son, and I've known him 40 years because him and Mama yeah. were married a long time, yeah. and that was my stepbrother. But um, just pray for him. That mostly save his soul. You know, we can leave here with lame bodies, but these souls have to be took care of. And if he dies, he's gonna go to hell. I mean, I'm just no. I know how he lives, and I know that he won't go to heaven unless he changes his way of living. And I, I, if he goes, if, that, if this is God's choosing, it's okay. But I want to see his soul saved. And I want to know it for myself. Amen. And I'm going to go over and see him at some point. When I go, I want to be able to witness to him. And I want to hear a good report from him. And I want to see a good report. And, and he's just young. So just pray that God will raise him up. If he's not done with him, raise him up. And if he is done with him, to save his soul. And I want to see the, the difference in him when I go over there. I want to know the walk is different and the talk is different. He don't have to walk in the physical, but I, I want to hear the, the walk in his voice. You know, I want to know that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. So let's just pray for his physical and his spiritual body. Amen. Sister Sarah, down at the nursing home, pray for her. And I told Tracy we have prayer for him too. Brother Tracy, sick this evening. Anybody else? Praise God. Brother yes. Hunter. Hunter. With Hunter with a broken wrist. Amen. If Amy any prayers, she needs prayer. Amen. We always Phoebe. Have any need of prayer. Phoebe and Austin are yes, boys. I just pray for my brother. He has five strokes. He has five, six years. But uh, his mind is like a child. And his wife is really going through a hard time. You know, she's been at her husband. She's been with him for 20 years, 25 years now. And uh, he just doesn't give her any love. We can identify with some of that. Yeah. 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 Amen. Um, I would like to share something. Thursday morning, I was in a deep sleep at the hospital. And I was kind of like in outer space. But my three boys, was it was just us. The three boys were buried together, and I'm over here, and I'm saying, I can't help y'all, but you're strong enough to do this on your own. I can't help you. I was far away from them. Now, I don't know if I'm going to die or, or what it means or anything, but the three of them I was trying to uh, let them know that they were strong enough to carry it on. And if something should happen, pass that to them. Sure will. Y'all remember that. Yes, amen. Y'all remember that. Because I haven't got to talk to any of them to, to share that with them or anything. So, but um, I don't know what God has for me, but I'm not afraid. Amen. Amen. I'm not afraid. Not afraid. You'll be and shouting on the streets of glory. I hated it when that nurse woke me up and said, you want to go to I want to know where I was at. She said she, did y'all hear that? She said she hated it when the nurse woke her up for a cup of coffee. She would want to go back to where she was. Amen. It was, I was in, it was just awesome. Was, I could see nothing. It was just fake. Awesome. But my boys were sitting there together, my three boys. Amen. God is good. Anybody else? All right, well, if we just stand to our feet, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we've heard tonight of those that are battling cancer. God, they need a touch for you. God, the doctors may say that they're finished and there's nothing else they can do. 
But we know Dr. Jesus. And we know what Dr. Jesus can do because we've seen it before. God, I pray that you just go to a right now. God, I pray that you'll do a work that only you can do. And then when it's done, I pray that the doctors and everybody around can only just say that it must have been the hand of God. God, we just thank you today for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you for that healing power in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray for Ronald today, God, that you'll touch him. God, that you'll fix his body, God, that you'll correct everything that's wrong in there. But most importantly, God, I pray for his soul today. God, that he can know without a shadow of a doubt that you are Lord of all. Lord, we pray for Sister Sarah tonight in the nursing home. God, I pray that you would touch her and bless her and keep her strengthened and encouraged for Bambi today and those children. God, I pray that you would bless them. And God, I pray that you would help them through their sickness and keep them encouraged. For Robert today, I pray that you would just keep him encouraged and bless him today. God, for all of our folks today that are struggling with health, God, I pray that you would just bless in a mighty way. God, we need a touch from you today more than we ever have. God, I pray that that touch would be on the way. God, we just love you today and we thank you and we just lift up your name. May the name of Jesus be higher than any name. And we thank you. God, as we dismiss and go in the back and fellowship, God, I pray that you will bless the time of fellowship that we just had a sweet, sweet, sweet fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.